Broadcasting from Charlotte, North Carolina on Sports Byline USA. Uniting sports fans everywhere, this is Unpacking It with Bryce Johnson. People want the authenticity, right? They want to know a little bit more. They don't want just the cliches. For the next hour, we will unpack sports, faith, and life with intriguing guests from the sports and entertainment world. Uh, I'm thankful that God has delivered me and he's given me a mouthpiece to be able to, a platform as well to be able to share with different people. Bringing you high energy and thought-provoking sports talk with a purpose. When you're around somebody that has that joy and you can feel it and it's contagious. Um, Every day I ask, you know, what does God have in store for me and how does he want to utilize me in this position that I hold. Now, from his mic to your ears, this is Bryce Johnson. Welcome to Unpacking It. I'm Bryce Johnson. Thanks so much for joining us as we unpack sports, faith, and life with intriguing guests from the sports and entertainment world. Today on the show, we'll be joined by former NFL quarterback and current college football analyst Brock Heward from ESPN. Uh, man, he's an awesome guy and excited to, to hear a little bit about his story and, and what he's up to. And, and man, he's a busy guy in the media world. Uh, he's nationally, of course, on, on ESPN, but then locally in Seattle, he does a, a daily radio show and, and also does the, the preseason games for the Seattle Seahawks. And so, uh, it'll be fun to catch up with him because he also does a faith and sports podcast similar to unpacking it. Uh, but, but he's got a different perspective on things. And so, uh, it's, it's called Above and Beyond, and, and so we'll ask him about that as well. Coming up next segment, we'll do I'm Convinced, and I've got three topics to discuss today. One involves Baltimore and, and their decision to start Lamar Jackson or continue to keep him as their starter, even though Joe Flacco is now healthy. Uh, I've got some thoughts on that, plus the, the idea of having an interim head coach and what the Green Bay Packers are going through right now is interesting. The Athletic wrote an article about it, and so I'll get into that and some of the the just what goes on for an interim head coach is is pretty interesting. It's not as easy as you would maybe think. Oh, it's kind of a nice promotion. Eh, that's a tough one. It really is. Uh, also, at the end of the show, we'll do we'll do our segment called Unpack This, and I've got to talk about last weekend's big play for the Miami Dolphins, the, the Miami Miracle. So all that's coming up. It's unpacking it. We're just getting going right here on Sports Byline USA. More sports, faith, and life coming up on Unpacking It with Bryce Johnson. Intriguing guests and inspiring conversations. This is Unpacking It with Bryce Johnson. Thanks so much for joining us today. We're a show that unpacks sports, faith, and life. You can check out our website, unpackingit.com, and be sure to subscribe to our email devotional and our podcast. It's time right now for a segment we call I'm Convinced, where I take a look at some of the interesting stories in sports and let you know what I'm convinced of. And I want to start in the NFL because I'm convinced. Joe Flacco, quarterback for the Baltimore Ravens, has overachieved throughout his career. I was at the national championship game when he was in college playing for Delaware, and they lost to my Appalachian State Mountaineers. So I'm convinced he wasn't the best quarterback on the field, and I never thought I was watching a future Super Bowl winning quarterback. However, Flacco did win one and has had a nice career and in many ways is underappreciated. So I say all that because I'm convinced it's time for the Ravens to move on from him as their starter, and I'm convinced John Harbaugh made the right decision this week to stick with Lamar Jackson as their starter. He's been winning and adding a huge spark to the offense, and so with that said, I'm also convinced that players can lose their job while injured, and it's okay that they do. Because there's this idea that, oh, man, if he's the starter, if Joe Flacco's been the franchise quarterback, he's got this huge contract, when he comes back healthy, he's got to be the guy. But I'm convinced if somebody's playing well while you're out, you keep the job. And so the Ravens are buying into that as well. They feel 
that right now Lamar Jackson is giving them the best chance to win and, and sneak into the playoffs. And so it's going to be interesting, though, how does Jackson play with Flacco standing on the sideline and sort of hovering over him in some ways? Because when Jackson was out there playing and Flacco wasn't you know healthy or threatening to come in, now he's standing there. He's a guy who's taken this team to a Super Bowl, won a Super Bowl, and, and to the playoffs regularly. He's won a lot of games there. And so now Jackson has to overcome that pressure. But so far uh, throughout this season, he's playing so well and, and is continuing to really lead this offense in such a unique way because he's running so often. And, and other running backs uh, on this offense are also playing better because of Jackson. And so the whole the rushing attack has, has been very uh, impressive for the Ravens this year. So, again, I'm convinced that players can lose their job once they get injured. And you just have to think about even the situation with Flacco. What's so fascinating is the reason Flacco became the starter initially when he was a rookie was because starters and, and guys ahead of him on the depth chart, Troy Smith and Kyle Bowler, both got injured. And so Flacco came in and never gave the job back. And and you think about Tom Brady and, and Drew Bledsoe with the New England Patriots, and and there are just story after story of regardless of the position, when a guy comes in for you and you go out and plays well, he keeps his job. And it's just funny to me that sometimes that's even an argument. Well, of course the better guy is going to play, and sometimes you don't know that the better guy is sitting behind the starter until he is is out there in game action. Because you can't always tell that in practice. And a lot of times, when a guy is an established starter, you don't even really open your mind to the possibility that the backup is going to be that much better than him. Now, the Ravens drafted Lamar Jackson in the first round, and so there was a hope that he could take over for Flacco. But but for for Jackson to beat out Flacco in, in practice, I think that would have been tough. But since he went out there the last few games and has won games and has played well, He's earned his spot as the starting quarterback for the Ravens. So it's going to be fascinating to see the rest of the way. And so that's what I'm convinced of with Joe Flacco and Lamar Jackson. Number two this week, I'm convinced I won't be ordering food at a stadium or an arena for a while. Did you guys see this story? ESPN's Outside the Lines reviewed and collected more than 16,000 food safety inspection reports from health departments that monitor the 111 professional football, baseball, basketball, and hockey facilities across North America. And get this, they ranked the venues based on violations, and the worst was the place with 92% of high-level violations per inspection. And guess what? That's where I'll be on Wednesday. It's the Spectrum Center, home of the Charlotte Hornets. So they had 25 total outlets inspected, and 23 of them had high-level violations. So I'm convinced I won't be ordering any food at at the game on Wednesday. I'm going to have to eat at home or, or find another option. But here's the thing. I'm convinced that getting food at a game is part of the experience. But now that I've heard this information, I'm just convinced it's not worth it. And and what's so interesting, though, I'll be curious to see how other fans respond to this news. Because a lot of people go, "Ah, I don't care. It won't happen to me. I'm not worried about it. And and they don't get caught up in, you know, the the germs or the the violations or the concerns or the the illnesses that could be spread. They they don't care. They just want their hot dog and and they move on. But for, for people like me that this bothers them, and maybe that's you listening, the concessions at pro sports venues are a $2 billion industry. And so will this take a hit and what will leagues do to respond? Now, some of these violations are, you know, they're smaller and, and it's, it's, it's actually not that different than your local restaurant in what's taking place at stadiums. But the problem is there are so many people eating food at one time that that if something happens, a virus gets in the food or, or some food wasn't prepared correctly, there are a lot more people eating that food and then getting sick and, and getting food poisoning. And so it's just a nightmare. I mean, it really is tough to, to for these you know places and these food companies to actually run their concession stand and keep up with it. 
But then you have to have so many staff that, that's involved in following the, the right rules. And so a lot of things can just slip through the cracks because things are happening so fast and so many people want food and we want it so quickly because we got to get back to the action to be able to watch the game. And so it's understandable that some of this happens. But as much as I love to get a hot dog at a baseball game, this makes me second guess it. And so I'm convinced I'll stick to the, the peanuts that, that are in a nice wrapper uh, or maybe even a soft pretzel. I feel like, eh, can a soft pretzel, what, what can you do? How can you ruin a soft pretzel? Uh, so those will be my two options possibly uh, moving forward. But it, it's just a, it was an eye-opening. I watched the Outside the Line special, and it was just concerning to think, yeah, this makes sense, but this is what's going on at venues with, behind the scenes with all that food being prepared. Yikes. All right, number three. We're going to have to fly through this one. Uh, I, got, I got too busy talking about hot dogs. All right, number three. I'm convinced being an interim coach is way harder of a job than we as fans realize. The Athletic wrote an article about what it's like being an NFL interim coach. And, and part of the reason for writing this was because Joe Philbin ha- has taken over for Mike McCarthy with the Green Bay Packers. And so he, here are some of my thoughts in thinking about uh, interim coaches and, and reading the article. Usually the coordinator had a good relationship with the head coach, and so they've worked together for a while, and so I'm convinced it's hard to see your buddy get fired and then you're responsible to take over his job. So his family's going through all the the, the disappointment of losing their job, and then the interim coach comes in and says, oh, this is a promotion, here I go. It's an opportunity for me to showcase my skills, but the reality is it's so hard to change anything late in the season when normally these guys take over and you really can't fully put your stamp on a team and you know that this was your buddy's team the the head coach who got you a job as a coordinator is now gone and and so it just feels weird it may make sense that it would not to mention it's usually a bad situation that an interim head coach is stepping into it's a struggling team and so it's hard to motivate players that don't expect you to really be their coach when the season ends and then even if a coach does you know, win a couple games, and, and Philbin won the other day, an impressive win against the Falcons, but it's hard to judge a coach's performance based on a couple of games as an interim coach because we don't know the type of staff he would build for next year, and you're, you're still carrying over everything that the, fir- the, the original guy had in place. And so maybe you're making a couple of tweaks, but it's really hard to know. So that's what I'm convinced of this week. we got to take a quick break. We'll be back with Brock Heward right after this. More sports, faith, and life coming up on Unpacking It with Bryce Johnson. Bringing you unique insight into the faith and character of guests from the sports world. Welcome back to Unpacking It with Bryce Johnson. So glad to be with you. Check out our website, unpackingit.com. And joining us now on Unpacking It is Brock Heward. He spent time in the NFL with the Seattle Seahawks and the Indianapolis Colts. He was also a three-year starter at the University of Washington. He's been a college football analyst for ESPN for 10 years. He co-hosts a morning radio show on 710 ESPN Seattle. He's an analyst for the Seattle Seahawks. He's also the podcast host of Above and Beyond the Intersection of Faith and Sports. Most importantly, he's a follower of Jesus, a husband, and a father. Brock, it's so great to have you on today. How are you? You know, Bryce, I'm doing great, man. And just uh, that introduction, I am so glad that our worlds could intersect here, you know, and and get to know you and and talk to you a little bit off the air and, and see your heart and your vision for what you're doing uh, man, I'm just, I'm stoked. I'm glad we get to unpack it together and, and be a part of this and, and uh, need to see it happen. A- absolutely. No, I'm very thankful. And uh, we'll, we'll start with a little football talk and we'll start with college football though. And you cover, you know, all the storylines, all the different teams, but, but is there, there one team or one storyline that, that has you more intrigued that, than even most other fans or even other analysts that, that really has your attention? Well, I think there's two situations, Bryce, that I would look at and put kind of in a similar box in that way. And it's a storyline that we've seen played out over the last few years of college football. And that is that college program who has watched some of their players turn down the NFL 
and go back to college mm. and say, you know what? I- I'm really enjoying the journey collegiately. And I love my coaches. I love my teammates. I love the program. I'm not ready to just go be a pro. I want to be together with my teammates for one more year and see what we can do. And, and a few years ago, it was in East Lansing up in Michigan and Michigan state made the playoff last year. It was down in Georgia with Sony Michelle and Nick Chubb, a couple running backs that could have gone to the pros and said, Nope, Nope, I want to go back to school and, and see what we can do. And obviously they were, well, a player or two away from winning the national title. And this year there's two. There's one on your coast and one on my coast uh, out here. And that would be Clemson with Dabo Sweeney, who oh, yeah. I've gotten to know over the years and who I actually taped a, a, one of my podcasts with that's going to come out during the season and one of my favorites nice. uh, in the two years of doing the podcast. And and uh, and watching Dabo in, in, in just his program and his players and his teammates and and like three of his defensive linemen said, no, I don't want to go to the NFL. I love what we got going on at Clemson, and I want to be a part of it. And the same thing where, where I went to school, at the University of Washington. Uh, their, their coach, Chris Peterson, has done a phenomenal job. Their left tackle, Trey Adams, their running back, Miles Gaskin, maybe names that aren't familiar to everybody uh, all across the country, but they sacrificed in the same way because they wanted to finish their story. They wanted to unpack their final season of eligibility and I love those storylines because we hear so much of the other ones of guys being used and guys wanting to leave and guys and all the, all the Ill, ills of college football. I love when it's presented the other way. And those will be two stories I'll watch closely. I love it. It's a great perspective. Brock Huard with us right now on Unpacking It. Former NFL quarterback. Now he's a college football analyst and, and podcast host of Above and Beyond. And, and so you're also out in Seattle. And so every, every morning you're, you're talking on the radio about Seattle sports and, and during the preseason you're, you're doing TV for, for the Seahawks. And, and so I'm a, I'm a Panthers fan. I'm, I'm in Charlotte and, and, you know, follow the team and all that. Well, we've always kept an eye on Seattle and, and I've got to ask you as somebody who's, who's in it, what, what's happened to the Seahawks these last couple of years from, from your perspective, because we think back to the, the Super Bowl loss to new England. And ever since then, it's just been kind of confusing and just kind of hard to, to wrap our mind around what, what's going on with Seattle. So what, what, what do you make of all that? Yeah, yeah, Bryce, good question. And, and I would say we do have relationship because the Panthers and Seahawks have played a lot of meaningful games over oh, the yeah. years, right? The Seahawks oh, yeah. ended the, 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 the Panthers season in 14. The Panthers ended the Seahawks season, I think, in 15 in the playoffs and, and have gone back and forth every regular season seemingly and played. And, yeah, we've had a lot of relationship on the field. I would say as far as the, the culture and, and just, you know, watching the Seahawks thing unfold after their two Super Bowls, winning one, losing one, is you've seen just an erosion of some of their brand. And, and what I mean by that, and that sounds really harsh, mm-hmm. but, you know, Pete Carroll is all about compete. He wrote a book about it. It's what he built the program on. It's what he built his dynasty at USC on. It's compete every day and compete every day. And, you know, I think, you know, good and bad, you had so many talented players uh, for so many years making a lot of money that there just wasn't legitimate competition. Those guys were not going to lose their job. They were going to be a part of this thing with all the guaranteed money. And they got older. uh, They got a little bit satisfied. And they certainly got uh, self-empowered with some of their own imaging and messaging over that of the team and the competition. So I think you felt some of that uh, from afar as much as anything. And now they're resetting, they're restarting, and they're doing so, kind of like Carolina did in a way. When they had to reset some of their roster, at least you're doing it with a franchise quarterback, and that gives us still a lot of hope in Seattle. Brock Huard, our guest right now on Unpacking It. He's a college football analyst for ESPN, and he's also a, a morning radio host in Seattle. And, and so as I was looking at your, your bio and thinking about all these different platforms that you're on from, from podcast to TV to, to radio, how, how do you approach each and, and what do you appreciate about each media outlet that you're on? Oh, that's an awesome question too, Bryce. Yeah, they're all a little bit different. I don't think there's any question. The, the podcast has been by far work I do, and I'm not afraid to, to say that, and that's not a slight on anything else I do and some of the ministry opportunities on a daily basis that I get on the radio in my building, with my, with my co-host, with our audience. It's unique. It's personal. We've been at it about a decade. So there's a lot of tremendous relationship in our community, and I love that aspect of it. I love connecting with everybody in my building and everybody listening and, and our advertisers. So for me, I kind of put it in that silo. That is a connection job. 
uh, the TV is a little bit like Ocean's Eleven. You know, we've got about 35 on our crew. We're from all over the country. We fly in, we do our job, then we scatter. Then we fly in, we do our job, and we scatter. And we become really close in the season because of that. So there, too, is a, kind of a unique connection in that way. And then this podcast world has just kind of just been an absolute blessing. Um, it's been kind of the payoff, I think, in many ways, of a lot of that other work. And, mm. you know, Bryson, talking to you a little bit, there's a similar – I think a similar story where, you know, you were doing it in the secular community and world for so long, and, and I'm sure in some ways still are, but this is a real ministry for you, and being able to jump in with two feet and full time, really serving the Lord with unpacking it is, uh, is a bit of what the, the Above and Beyond podcast is for me. It's ministry. It has been meaningful. It's been the most fulfilling work in the media business for me uh, by a long shot. Wow, and and, and I, I love the podcast. Enjoy listening when I'm working in, in the yard, and and just some amazing stories and conversations. Matt Hasselbeck and Jake Locker, and and all these different guys. What what have maybe been, what has been the biggest takeaway for you as you've now been doing this? How many episodes? A lot. Season two, and and so, yeah, yeah. What's been the big yep. takeaway? Yeah, you know, it less of me and more of him, please. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I think that that is the, the reminder and lesson for all of us is just get out of the way. You know, I got to sit uh, under a great teacher and, and discipled by Ken Etcherson, who's a pastor, a former Seahawks player out here in the Pacific Northwest at Antioch Bible Church. And, and that would be often his prayer before every sermon was just move him out of the way so the Lord could do whatever he wanted to whoever he wanted in whatever way he wanted. And uh, that's really my prayer every time with this podcast is just get me out of the way. And I've got a wonderful producer, uh, James Osborne, who works on our radio show as well. And he's a super sounding board and accountability partner. He loves the Lord. And, you know, we were just talking the other day and he's like, you know, season one uh, was so cool. And we got out of the way more and more and more. And season two, I think just like anything, you try to well, what can we do here, and how can we improve that? And you have like all this kind of focus, which is great, but ultimately just get out of the way hmm. and uh, and let the Lord open the doors to those He's He wants their message shared, and close those doors that that aren't quite you know uh, in His timing and in His will. So I think as much as anything, Bryce, that's what I've learned. It's just my my taste of ministry, I guess, of just really trusting the Lord that uh, this is His, and it's certainly not mine. Ah, it's it's great. Check it out. The podcast available wherever podcasts are found. It's called Above and Beyond the Intersection of Faith and Sports. We're talking with Brock Heward right now on Unpacking It. And and so normally you're you're interviewing other guys and they're sharing their their story of faith. And so we, we do a little bit of that as well here on our show. And so I'll ask you, what was your life like before you started following Jesus? Yeah, it was uh, a mess. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I thank God by the grace of God uh, that he knocked on my heart at a young age, a very young age uh, in, in my home that, uh, that, you know, I was called. I was watching the 700 Club at times instead of cartoons. I was wondering about where I was going in my life, even at a very young, kind of intense age. Wow. And, uh, and I had a youth pastor come into my life in seventh grade, Scott Sears, who said, you know what? Uh, you're a pretty intense kid. Uh, you come from a football family. So my dad was a, a Hall of Fame coach in our hometown. My older brother, you know, was an awesome quarterback, played 12 years in the NFL and, and everything else. And, and he could see that football was a big part of my life and my family's life. But he knew that there was a lot more. And he knew, I think, for the way that I was wired and some of my emotion and intensity that I better find the Lord or this thing could uh, <laughs> could cream off the other side. So yeah. he uh, he poured into me. I came to the Lord as a freshman in, in high school. I gave my life to him and found, you know, a whole lot of peace and security. And I, I think probably from ninth grade to where I sit at 42 years of age and what I just shared with you, get out of the way. Mm. Just And the more that I did that throughout my career, the more I do that as a dad, the more I do that in my marriage as a husband, the more that I just truly can die to myself uh, on a daily basis and give more of, you know, just the, the Lord to all of those relationships, man, there's so much infinitely more peace and joy and all the fruits of the Spirit that come from it. Amen. I love it. Man, good stuff from Brock Heward. We're going to take a quick break, but we're just getting going. We've got plenty more with Brock right after this on Unpacking It. The place to hear athletes opening up about their true passions in life. This 
is Unpacking It with Bryce Johnson. Fantasy football is the best. You compete with your friends and family all season long, and when you win, it's so exciting. I have won two rings myself, and as fun as fantasy football already is, what if we played with more purpose and meaning? Well, at Fantasy Football Fellowship, we created a way for you to have league meetings throughout the season to discuss how fantasy relates to our lives and the Bible. Each week, we have content, topics, and questions that allow fantasy owners to connect intentionally with each other and to God. We'll help your league have conversations about fantasy, faith, and life as you go from the draft to the championship. Play fantasy football and change your lives. Sign your league up today at FantasyFootballFellowship.com. Going beyond the field, this is Unpacking It with Bryce Johnson on Sports Byline USA. Thanks so much for joining us here on Unpacking It. Be sure to check out our website, unpackingit.com. You can always get in touch with me, Bryce at unpackingit.com is the email, Bryce at unpackingit.com. We're in the middle of really an awesome interview with Brock Heward. You know him from ESPN, covers college football. He's an analyst uh, in the studio as well as during games and and also uh, is based in Seattle and and covers the, the Seattle Seahawks closely, is on radio locally in Seattle and uh, as a former NFL quarterback, and so really uh, just a, a great guy and appreciate him taking some time today. And so uh, let, let's continue now, Brock. And, and so as you, you look back at this, this journey of faith, and, and thankfully it, it started at a, a young age, when, when you think back to some defining moments, defining seasons of life, what, what comes to mind where, where you just really look back and go, man, that was a season where, where God really worked and I really grew in my faith and my reliance in him. That's a, that's awesome. I got married young, so we got married right out of right out of college. My wife Molly and I have been married 19 years now, and I am so thankful that at every turn and every season that that the, and I and I really encourage so many of those that follow the Lord that if you just get on your knees and pray for those that can come and shape and empower and love on your life, you know, that has certainly been my one of my messages as well, to get out of the way, number one, and number two, get on your knees and pray for that accountability. And I have had that, whether that was Scott through my high school years, whether that was Mike Gunn in my college years, whether that was Carl Payne and Eric Simpson, the team chaplains with the Seahawks and Colts, whether that's the men's group that I'm in now with the two Steves and Graham, it's just those those men that, uh, that have been so important, the Tony Dungies of the world that have played such an impact in my life, Bryce. So mm. that is probably... Um, as much as my uh, my byline or my messaging as I could possibly encourage is just lean into the Lord, seek accountability, and He will certainly pass for me for decades of my journey and my walk. I need that. I'm a team guy. I, you know, I grew up as I said, my home was a football home, a team home. I knew the meaning of team, and we still need it, and uh, and I still need that uh, accountability and in uh, the men in, in my life that helped shape it. Oh, gosh, so good. And I want to ask you about your brothers in, in a moment. Uh, but but in, in speaking about just some of these key messages that, that are so important in your life and, and have been over the years, I, I know as the, the football season begins, coaches are always hammering, you know, maybe one or two points as kind of the focus for the, the season. Where you're at today in, in your life, what, what's been on your heart and, and mind lately as, as you study and spend time with God What's been the, the most recent focus for you? Yeah, that, uh, that, that's fun because uh, just this last year, I got uh, to share at a really neat conference. Uh, it's called the Higher Ground Conference out in the Pacific Northwest. And, and in kind of approaching that, and in, in many of these speaking opportunities, I do just that, Bryce. I'm like, what is the Lord teaching me right now? I try not to just give all my impactful stories, and there were certainly some of them in, in my conversion and lessons that I've learned through the years, but really is what is the Lord uh, shaping me and teaching me right now in my life? And right now, and at that conference, I said to the folks putting it on, I said, is there any way that I can just bring my accountability group and we can just bring the table 
from the little coffee shop that we uh, that we meet at every Wednesday morning at 5 a.m. Can I bring that table and just put it on stage? And then can we just spend the 45 minutes together with these men and 600 men at this conference and just walk them through what we do Wednesday mornings at 5 a.m.? Because that's where I'm at in my life right now. Wow. You know, that's where I'm at in my marriage. That's where I'm at parenting. I've got a, a 15 and a half year old daughter and a 13 year old daughter and eight year old son. And we're just right in the midst of parenting teenagers. Right, and losing some of the control and trying to love it and, uh, and walk through that faithfully and not have like a, a sense of overbearing control, but that they've got to, got to grow and, and they've got to find their relationship with the Lord. And, and so that, I think, is where more than anything, Bryce, I'm at right now and would just, again, double down and encourage those men and women that are listening right now and, 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 and any young people that are listening right now, you're just not going to do it alone. Uh, we have this uh, this flag around town here in Seattle, and it was more prominent in the Super Bowl runs than maybe it is right now, but it's the 12th man flag. Mm. So if you were to drive around and, and hang out with me for a day and drive all around, you'd see all these number 12 flags. And what that is is a reminder, honestly, to me, is the 12 disciples. Mm. They needed one another. Right? Mm. Jesus needed his team of men. He needed those guys for the good, the bad, the ugly, the failures, the successes, <laughs> the ego, the all the stuff that they walked through in life with him and certainly, um, you know, that he empowered their, their ministry in, in the early church, but they needed one another and mm. we do as well. And I would just double down in that way that you're not ever alone. And uh, to seek that love and that accountability group that's been just really pertinent in my life. Wow. I, I tell you what, Brock, it's amazing because the, I, I've interviewed two other guys in, in recent weeks and that's been their message as well. So, so God's really speaking through our guests on this show just about accountability and, and fellowship and, and just that, that community aspect uh, is just so important for, for all of us as we, as we grow in our faith. And so uh, appreciate your, your perspective on that. And I, I love the, the concept of, of bringing your accountability buddies to this conference. That, that's really cool to hear. That's a good story. And it was really neat, you know, and you just think of that word, you know, accountability. And we throw it around all the time, but the ability and being able to be counted on. And it's not just a oh, I need you so bad, and oh, I'm just like this, this seeker that needs someone. No, it's that you're also able to be counted on, to understand that God uses every one of us in our, in our giftedness, in our successes, in our failures, you know, that yes, you need others, but others need you too, mm. and they need your gifts to be poured into them and to be shared with them and, and your story to pour into them and to be able to be counted on both ways. It's not just a taker relationship that, oh, I need this group, and where can I find this group? No, you're part of that. You're part of that story, and every one of us has a powerful story and testimony to share. Mm, so good. Brock Heward, our guest right now on Unpacking It. You know him from ESPN. He also hosts a radio show in Seattle and is an analyst for the Seahawks, uh, but he's also got an awesome podcast called Above and Beyond, the intersection of faith and sports, and so highly recommend you checking that out. And and you mentioned uh, your your family, and and I'm one of three boys, and so I know you've got an older brother and a younger brother. So so, what impact have have they had on your life, and and what role do your brothers play in your life? Pretty competitive home. <laughs> That's what we were. Uh, I like to joke and say we were the poor man Manning's family. Nice. Right? Eli Peyton, they played a long time. Won Super Bowls. Damon Damon played 12 years. He played a long time. Yeah, I fooled him for six years. And then my little brother is a phenomenal coach. He's down at in Sacramento at Sacramento State as an offensive coordinator and, and two beautiful little girls himself. And to be honest with you, that's probably where so much of our time and our energy is spent relationally is all of our kiddos and mm-hmm. trying to be you know, good dads and certainly good uncles uh, to all the nieces and nephews. And, and you know, we actually, just over this last weekend, uh, we were down visiting my parents in Puyallup, a uh, small town, about 45 minutes, not so small anymore. It was small when we grew up, but it's grown <laughs> up like everything else. And we were celebrating mom and dad's 46th wedding anniversary. And uh, my mom and dad love family. They love the grandkids. And, I mean, just looking around the table the other day, like, gosh, look at all these kids. And I can remember – when I was, you know, my nephew's age, he was a little quarterback in, in, in our area and a great little quarterback and thinking, I remember when I was 16 and looking at my daughter, I remember when I was 15 and walking through, you know, all that life brings teenagers in these days and ages, day and age. So that's what we spend a whole lot of time and energy on. Oh, that, that's really cool. Brock Hjord, 
Man, it's been awesome talking with you. And and I've got one just kind of final random question as, as I was researching about you. And it just kind of jumped out to me because uh, I, I studied broadcasting in college and I got a sociology minor. And so I saw that you graduated from Washington with a psychology degree. So how does that play into your, your life? And, and, and how did you end up doing psychology? Yeah, my it, I coast and every day of why I'm doing sports talk radio and getting up at 5 a.m. I was actually um, was a guy. I loved it. Football not worked out. I think I'd have continued down that road, Bryce, to do the pre-med thing. Uh, football did work out, and I love just the psychology and kind of the overthinker. It's why I'm also an analyst and do the college football games. It hurt me as a player, especially <laughs> professionally. But it's been a pretty good thing uh, as an analyst to try to think through everything and ultimately landed on, on that degree. I, I will say this, too, lastly. If anyone's listening and they're like, gosh, does this guy ever shut up? He just talks a lot. He sounds like these sports talk guys. Just know that above and beyond gets me out of the way. And it's a lot less of me and a whole lot more of some awesome testimonies, a whole lot like you're doing, Bryce. And, uh, and keep it up. I love what you're doing. Uh, thanks for having me uh, be a part of this thing and keep doing what you're doing, bro. Oh, absolutely. No, thank, thankful for what you're doing and, and encourage people to check out the podcast Above and Beyond. He's Brock Heward. He's the host. It's the intersection of faith and sports, and they go real in-depth on, on these players and these coaches and their broadcasters and their stories, and uh, really cool to check it out. So uh, encourage you there, and uh, Brock will be watching you throughout the, the college football season as, as you're an analyst during games and then during the week previewing games and breaking games down. And so uh, keep up the great work, and we'll, we'll definitely have to do this again soon. I would, like, I would sure like to do that, Bryce, and you too, man. I love I love that you're out there, that you've got a heart to do this, to connect the sports fans and the Christians together, because I think it's an amazing ministry. And I know that you have felt this, that people want the authenticity, right? They want to know a little bit more. They don't want just the cliches. They really want to dig in. I think that's the beauty of the day and age that we live in. And just keep doing what you're doing. Amen. Amen. I appreciate it, Brock. That was fun. Hope you guys enjoyed that. And if you missed any part of the interview, be sure to check out our podcast uh, really, anywhere podcasts are found, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, uh, we're everywhere. So so thanks for listening today, and if you ever want to listen later or, or send the interview to someone uh, that you think might be encouraged by it, uh, be sure to, to do that, and, and you can find more information on unpackingit.com. Well, coming up next, uh, we'll do our final segment, and I'm going to talk about last week's huge play that that took place with with seconds on the clock and really time expiring with with the Dolphins beating the Patriots uh, but before we get to that I just real quickly wanted to uh to say a, a quick shout out to all the fantasy owners right now that that are in the the playoffs and and I'm so thankful I'm in the final four for both of my leagues and, and, and nobody likes to hear about anybody else's league because they're focused about on their own team and their own league. But, but I will say this. For, for those of you that are dealing with injuries, you've gotten this far, and then this week you heard the news uh, about Carson Wentz. You heard the news about Spencer Ware, Carrion Johnson. I can relate to you. I understand your pain because... These are guys that, that you count on week to week. Or like for me, I drafted Carrion Johnson in the fourth round. I drafted Carson Wentz in the sixth round. Those were players that I was counting on to be available toward the end of the season. But, but get this. Is anybody else like this in your own league? So I'm, I'm up against a buddy, and he heard the news before me that Carson Wentz was, was injured and, and wasn't going to play. And so he went out into free agency and, and the, on the waiver wire and signed all the quarterbacks. So I was left with Nick Mullins from the San Francisco 49ers, but I've, I, I'm okay with it. Even though he's maybe not projected to have you know, huge points against Seattle, he played well uh, a few weeks ago against the Seahawks. It was really kind of his coming out party. So I'm, I'm fine with it, but, but what about the, my, my buddy? He's got a, a roster filled with, with quarterbacks now. And so maybe he, he prevented me from going after Matthew Stafford 
uh, which might end up being fine. But it would have been nice if I could have picked up Nick Foles. So a little bit, a little bummed about that. Uh, but well, we'll see. So anyway, good luck to the fantasy owners out there. Uh, it's a it's a big weekend for sure. All right, we'll come back. We'll do our final segment. Unpack this. It's unpacking it. I'm Bryce Johnson. Thanks for being with us. Inspiring conversations and intriguing interviews. More unpacking it with Bryce Johnson after this. This is Unpacking It. I'm Bryce Johnson. Each week, we wrap up the show with a segment we call Unpack This, where I take a current sports story and relate it to the Bible and our own lives. So let's jump right in. Last Sunday, with seven seconds left, down by five, and on their own 31-yard line, the Miami Dolphins looked like they were going to lose to the Patriots. However, the Dolphins pulled off the Miami miracle by running a hook and lateral that resulted in a dramatic touchdown with time expiring. What stands out to me about this play is how Kenyon Drake possessed the ball, the holes opened up, and he just had to follow the path into the end zone. Uh, Of course, defenders were after him, but once he realized the way he needed to go, he just went for it. The Dolphins followed the openings they were given, the direction Drake needed to run toward became clear, and then victory followed. How this plan clicked for the Dolphins reminds me of what it's like to find the right path God wants us to take. Oftentimes, we attempt to execute our own plans, resulting in a fumble and a broken play. But when we open our eyes to see the field clearly, wait for his openings, and follow the design path he has for our lives, we experience victory. Even though there will always be defenders in the way, when we stay on the path that's been open for us, we'll be able to run right past them. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. In order for plans to click, We must have faith that God knows what's best and boldness to go for it once we see where we need to go. Today, let's choose to pray this verse continually. Show me the right path, O Lord. Point out the road for me to follow. Lead me by your truth and teach me, for you are the God who saves me. All day long, I put my hope in you. So I hope you're willing to unpack that. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope you'll stay connected with us throughout the week on social media and on unpackingit.com. If you have any thoughts about today's show, you can email me, Bryce at unpackingit.com. Until next time, I'm Bryce Johnson, and I'm a sports fan who follows Jesus. I believe in the good news that he died on the cross for my sins, and he was resurrected, and through faith, I have been saved by his grace. I hope that is true for you as well, and I hope you'll join me as we live life as sports fans who follow Jesus together. Have a wonderful week. This has been Unpacking It with Bryce Johnson on Sports Byline USA.